Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I am Xavier Jones. Uh, my graduate recital is on the works of the African American composer Robert Owens. And my paper is entitled Robert Owens, The Music of an African American Expatriate. Robert Owens' works are relatively unknown in the realm of American art song. Born in the United States and later migrating to Germany, Owens has spent his life as a pianist, composer, and actor, creating captivating melodies, rich harmonies that are a true reflection of the cosmopolitan American experience. His works have been primarily written for American singers, but have yet to truly find a place in American art song repertory. Owens' canons of art songs are mostly of poets of the Harlem Renaissance, particularly Langston Hughes. Owens was born in Denison, Texas on September 19, 1925, to Robert and Alpharetta Owens. His family moved to Berkeley, California while he was still an infant, and he spent much of his childhood in this environment. According to Jamie Reimer, the leading Robert Owens scholar, his mother was an excellent pianist who played at several bars and clubs in the San Francisco area to make extra money. She excelled at both classical and jazz piano, which greatly influenced Owens' compositional style. Owens started studied, form, formally studying piano at age four and showed exceptional talent on the instrument very early into his studies. However, his mother contracted tuberculosis when he was eight years old and was committed to a sanatorium. Due to the highly infectious nature of the disease, Owens was prevented from seeing his mother, and he would wait in the car as his father went inside to see her. Later, Owens' mother died when he was in junior high school, but he recalls the last words his mother uttered to him were, lying on her deathbed, were, I know you will be a great musician. These words had a profound impact on Owens and inspired him to take his musical studies more seriously. Shortly after his mother's death, Owens composed his first piano concerto at the age of 15. It was premiered by the Berkeley Young People Symphony. In 1942, Owens was drafted into the United States Army and was stationed in Stuttgart, Arkansas. The barracks were segregated and the colored soldiers, which were known as Company C, were assigned to the barracks near the German prisoners of war. Owens would often sneak over to the fence where the German POWs were held and befriended them. They offered to teach him German which he happily accepted. After the war, Owens used the GI Bill to travel to France, and he auditioned at the Paris Conservatory, but was not accepted. One of the examiners, however, agreed to take Owens as a student at the Paris École Normale de Musique. Owens' course of study was focused on piano performance in addition to standard harmony and counterpoint classes. His debut as, as a concert pianist took place in Copenhagen, Denmark in 1952 and the next four years were dedicated to additional study, this time in Vienna, under Professor Greta Hittenhofer. Owens returns to the United States in 1957 with a contract to teach at Albany State College in Albany, Georgia. It was here for the first time in his life Owens truly experienced segregation and racism. The racially divided culture made itself known even before his arrival in Georgia with news that the school had been burned. Owens describes his experiences in Georgia by saying, Albany opened my eyes to black society, but I saw they had the same structure that they got from the Americans, the whites. There were the doctors, the instructors, and they were on one level, and then there were, there were the poor. When I got to Georgia, it was like going to a foreign country. Owens spends most of his first year in Georgia teaching and spent free time in isolation. In the summer of 1958, Owens returns home to California for the summer and gives a concert. He is approached by an old family friend who tells him that the poet Langston Hughes may be interested in having Owens set some of his poetry to music. She gave Owens a letter of introduction and suggested he make an appointment with Hughes the next time he was in New York. Owens travels to New York later that summer and meets with Hughes. During that meeting, Hughes gave him a collection of poems named Field of Wonder, and he said, see what you can do with it. Fields of Wonder is a collection of poems written by Hughes while he was artist in residence at Atlanta University in 1947. These poems are some of the least known works in the Hughes canon because they are considered lyric poems. According to John Parker in his 1947 literary review of Fields of Wonder, 
By and large, the most powerful from the point of view of penetrating analysis is tyrants. It is in this section that the author touches upon the familiar topic of what it means to be in the totality of one's personality to be exploited, to move with the have-nots in a land of plenty. It is apparent, even though these poems do not express some of the more radical views that Hughes been, became known for, they still express the sentiment of an oppressed people in America, most likely the sentiment of the American Negro. The first cycle Owens composed after meeting Langston Hughes was Tearless for baritone and piano in 1958. The poetry reveals the story of the desperate, those without hope of ever improving their situations in life, and should be sung from that point of view. Philip Jerome Rogers, in his pedagogical study of Tearless, suggests that this group of poems depicts the lives of working class Negro persons in early 20th century America, whose hopes had been dashed as a result of racial oppression in America. I will now sing six of the eight songs from the song. We are, we are the desperate who do not care the hungry who have Oh, mm -hmm. 
from the night of you desperate hours of pleasure. Stealing from death a few desperate days of such as triads and emphasizes more dissonant intervals such as seconds, fourths, and sevenths. He also uses the same technique in the production of the melodic line as well. Owens did not come up with this form of composition through creating a compositional technique. It simply happened to in through inspiration. According to Reimer, embedded in his accompaniment figures are elements that will inform the melodic line such as rhythm and harmony though sometimes the melodic line appears to relate little to the accompaniment. Modulations are also very important in Owen's compositions. He states, in my music, it is very important to be aware of continuous modulations, going from one key to the other, because, the color, because it colors the expression of the words, thoughts, and feelings. Owens develops the form of each song independently, concentrating on the development of the piece by the way of the emotion of the poem. Owens also says this about his compositions. I break all the rules for successive fifths, parallel chords, and all of that. But I have found a style, melody, clarity, and having every sound is important. Like the orchestra, every instrument. It's something that makes my music a little difficult and different because it's simple. But that's the most difficult because it has to be right. Because you will hear everything that's not fitting in there. As I said earlier, 
Most of the songs that were composed by Owens were for Harlem Renaissance poets. However, he has composed several compositions with German texts as well, including the three liter for baritone and piano, text by Hermann Hesse. Hermann Hesse, German poet and novelist, was born in Germany in 1877. According to Joseph Malik, Hesse's father, Hermann Hesse Sr., was a pioneering missionary to India from 1836 to 1859. His mother, Marie Hesse, assisted her husband in ministry even after they returned to Germany. Hess was considered to be a hypersensitive, lively, imaginative, and headstrong child. But he experienced severe depression as a child and, ex and spent some time at a school for mentally retarded and emotionally disturbed children. Despite these issues, Hess always had a love for literature. According to Milsack, his mother said he was composing ditties before he ever wielded a pencil. Hess decided that he would be a writer when he was at the mere age of 13. Hess published the Nura Dorsche Lyrica in 1919. In this collection of poems are Fremdestadt, Eine Geige in den Gärten, and Im Nebel. These poems express the sentiment of Hess's heart. During the time leading up to him writing this collection of poems, he has experienced several traumatic events, including a divorce while living in Switzerland. <laughs>
The music of Owens has not been widely performed, but its musical value is unprecedented. It is my hope that this document sparks even more interest in the works of Robert Owens and the classical music of the African diaspora. Uh, first, I would like to thank my wonderful accompanist, Mr. Jeremy Rieger, for all he has done. He has been absolutely wonderful. Um, and the final two pieces that I will be singing are Faithful One and Genius Child, um, again by Robert Owens, takes by Langston Hughes.
So I went and looked, and it was very hard to find information on Robert Owens. I mean, it was horrible. There are only two dissertations out, and both of those have been published in the past 10 years. Um, and then as I was looking and we did research, I found out it just so happened at my undergraduate institution, he was the former piano professor. Um, and I was like, oh my God, that's a coincidence. And so um, ended up looking for music, um, looking for different stuff, and I found a whole bunch of stuff. And I was like, this music is really, really cool. And it kind of, his musical, how he writes things kind of makes sense to me, I guess you could say. Um, I grew up around a lot of gospel music and a lot of jazz and a lot of R&B. And a lot of those in type of influences are in, his, um, are in his compositions with the use of the chords and things that he uses. So it was very attractive to me. <clears throat> you probably know that Herman Hesse um, wrote a set of hard interviews and taken English uh, uh, literature courses. You may have read that. And I love uh, Herman Hesse's writing. Yeah, his writing is so, great. Thank you. independence that's required to perform that most thesis of aside from their company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was not easy. Um, but it was something that I really enjoyed and I really wanted to do it, so it was very enjoyable. And thank you so much, Mr. Adams. Any other questions? I was going to ask, um, how long did it take for you to like, like retain and actually understand what you were saying and what you were singing about? Like, how, how did it feel to you? Like, how did it touch you? as far as what you were, what you were singing about? Um, the good thing about the poems that, that, that in this particular, uh, that were represented here, I can say I've honestly felt most of these emotions at some point in my life, so it was very easy to actually draw um, from my own personal experiences to make them relate to me. Prime example, one of the um, um, songs that really, really um, kind of spoke to me was uh, M. Nabel from the German set. Um, when I learned that piece, actually, my grandmother had just had a massive stroke, and I kind of felt in the fog. I really felt in the fog about world and life because my grandmother was my world, and so um, it was very easy for me to put myself in that place. Um, and so um, most of these poems spoke to me because, you know, a lot of these poems talked about feeling like an outcast or feeling like life is hopeless, and so I was able to draw on those experiences and connect. So, Any other questions? Well, I would like to thank you all for coming. Um, this has been a great experience. Glad it's over. Um, <laughs> but it has been an absolutely wonderful experience. I thank you all for your support. I specifically would like to thank my voice professor, Dr. Patricia Saunders Nixon. Um, the entire music faculty at Norfolk State University. And I also see some of my housing family. Oh. Uh, for those of you all who don't know, I'm, I was actually a graduate assistant in the Department of Housing and Residence Life, and it's really good to see them and their support as well. So thank you all, and I hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend.